Hey, you guys, this is notes number three, take two. You guys should know that uh, I'm going nutso because I finished this video and then I found out that my mic was off, so none of the audio was recorded. So here's take two, all right? Okay, so this is the PDF that I sent you guys. Make sure that you guys print it out and you follow along with me um, or use a tablet and a stylus if you have that. But these are the common uh, McLaurin series, okay? This was also found on the other packet that you guys had. Um, but we need to make some slight alterations here, okay? So here we go. We're going to start off with what we know. So remember that cosine looks a little bit like this, okay? But in that, if you were to reflect it across the y-axis, you would get the exact same picture. So, so graphs that have that same type of behavior, we call those even functions, okay? So the way that I remember this is, this is even. Knowing that cosine is an even function, all of the terms when I expand it will be even as well. So here we go. 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the fourth over 4 factorial. And I'm only going to include the first three terms there, okay? Then we get to the uh, general term. I notice that it alternates in signs, so I'm going to have a negative 1 to the n power there. And then I notice that the degrees are all even. So to make it even, you just multiply 2 times n because two times anything will give you something even. All over the same degree factorial. Notice how the factorial is outside of the parentheses. Do not write it like this. Do not write it like this, because that implies that it's two times n factorial, which is very different, okay? So just keep that in mind. We're gonna make it go on forever endless so that it's equal okay so now we get to the series in summation form which is just a shortened version of your maclaurin series okay so remember maclaurin series just implies that it's centered at zero okay it is a taylor series centered at zero so it's the same thing here we're just going to write the summation of our general term, negative one to the n, x to the two n, all over two n quantity factorial. And then we're gonna start in at zero and we're gonna go all the way to infinity. So this plus dot 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 that we had right here is pretty much this infinity. We're saying that we're gonna have an infinite amount of terms. So the blue and the red statement there are equivalent statements. One is definitely shorter than the other, okay? Be comfortable with both. All right, so the next part is the interval of convergence. For now, just think of that as where does it overlap, right? Where does it overlap? So remember when we were exploring on Desmos, it overlapped pretty much as far as we wanted it to go. In theory, if we went all the way to infinity, right, it would still overlap the entire cosine function, all right? So it's all real numbers. You can do the fancy R if you guys wanted to. Okay, so sine, by definition, uh, sine looks like this, and sine has a behavior where if you were to reflect it across this diagonal line, you get the exact same picture as well, okay? Um, wait, is that right? No, I'm sorry, where if you if you reflect it on the x-axis and then the y-axis, you would still get the same picture, all right? So if there's a multiple reflection, you will still get the same picture. We call that odd functions, okay? So the way you remember it is it's odd with exclamation, okay? So that'll tell you that all of your terms will be odd degrees. So x to the first power over the first factorial, but I'm not going to write that, minus x cubed over 3 factorial, plus x to the fifth over 5 factorial. Now, even though the next term is going to be a minus, you could still do plus dot 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 
plus because that general term will explain what's going to happen, okay? So we know it's going to alternate, so we'll have negative 1 to the n. We know the degrees will be odd, so it's just going to be 2n plus 1 because 2n makes stuff even, and if you add 1 to it, it'll be odd. And 2n plus 1 quantity factorial down below plus dot dot dot, all right? Same thing here, summation will just be the summation, n equals zero, all the way to infinity of your general term. So that'll just be negative one to the n, x to the two n plus one, all over two n plus one factorial. All right, same thing, it's gonna overlap everywhere. The interval of convergence, it'll overlap everywhere, okay? And e to the x, is everything with exclamation everything all right so you want to include every single term one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial plus x to the fourth over four factorial but i'm not going to write all of it plus dot 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 plus i notice it doesn't alternate in signs here so we're not going to have the negative 1 to the n power. We're just going to have x. And I notice that I hit every degree, so it's just going to be x to the n over that same n factorial. And I go on forever. Now, moving pretty quickly, uh, but you could always pause and replay. But I'm moving quickly also because this is my take two, okay? All right, so this is going to be x to the n over n factorial. As n starts at 0, it goes all the way to infinity. All right? Um, same idea. When we explored on Desmos, we noticed that it kept overlapping. It took a long time, but it overlaps. Okay? So now there are these remaining four. All right? We're going to start at... Um, 1 over 1 minus x, okay? This is what we call a geometric series. You guys won't know what that is until we learn a little bit more in this unit. So just remember that name, geometric series. Uh, what it's all about, I'll explain it later, okay? 1 over 1 minus x. So we can do the same thing. We can graph it on Desmos, try to come up with a, a mimic function, a polynomial lookalike, calculate the error, and then repeat. But I'm just going to skip that stuff for you guys, okay? So that right here is just going to be 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus x to the fifth. But I'm only going to write the first three terms. So think about what that general term would be. Press play when you're ready. Since it's not alternating, we're not going to have a negative 1 to the n power. I notice that it hits every degree, so it's just going to be x to the n. There are no factorials. There are no denominators. So that's pretty much it. All right. So the expansion here is just going to be the summation. n starts at 0, goes all the way to infinity of x to the n power. All right. Now, just a quick exploration in terms of where it overlaps, okay? Okay, so here is your 1 over 1 minus x, all right? We're only focused when it's centered at 0, when we're really close to x equals 0. So this graph over here really doesn't matter, okay? So when x is 1, I'll change that to 1, when there's one term, so if you notice k is at the top here with the summation. So when there's only one term, that's what it looks like. It's a line. Notice how when we get really close to zero, they kind of overlap, right? But they only overlap from, I don't know, negative 0.05 to 0 0.05, not that much. But what if I increase the number of terms, right? So what I want you guys to do is take a look at where it overlaps. I'm going to let this run pretty quickly. And notice how k is going to go all the way up to 1,000. So even though 1,000 is not infinity, I think you guys will agree that it's far enough, okay? Okay. So I'm barely at 100, 
but you'll notice that where it overlaps slows down, okay? Where would you guys say the interval of convergence is? Where does it overlap, right? I'm going to go ahead and move this dial on over to 1,000. Even though I can go all the way to infinity, I think you guys will agree that 1,000 is far enough, but where does it overlap here, right? So notice how it's not negative infinity to infinity. At most, it's from negative 1 to 1, okay? It only goes from negative 1 all the way up to 1. Now, it doesn't touch negative 1 and 1 exactly, so we're going to use open parentheses. Why that is, I will answer that when we have enough information. So for now, just accept it, okay? All right, let's keep going. So 1 over 1 plus x looks oddly familiar. It looks very similar to what we have here, okay? In fact, 1 over 1 plus x is the same thing as 1 over 1 minus negative x. So this goes back to that last lesson where we start with what we know and then we build up. So this looks like just that top function here, except the x is replaced with a negative x. So I'm going to go ahead and do that here. Don't write this part down, okay? I'm going to go ahead and replace every x with a negative x. Okay, so this next part you're going to want to write down. So if I clean this up, that's 1 minus x. Negative x quantity squared is just positive x squared. What do you guys notice happens there? Okay, some of you are noticing that it alternates. And that's exactly what happens right here. I'll show you real quick. Negative x to the end is the same thing as, is the same thing as negative 1 times x quantity to the end, and then we could just let each of those factors have the same exponent, all right? So that's really just negative 1 to the end times x to the end, plus dot to dot. Okay, so we started off with what we know, and then we built off of it, all right? So the summation will start at 0, go all the way to infinity of our general term, all right? So when you replace an x with just something else, the interval of convergence, where it overlaps, doesn't really change. So it stays there, okay? And again, I'll give you a better explanation once we learn a little bit more, okay? All right. So let's recap real quick, okay, before we move on to the next one. Remember back in Calc AB with sine and cosine. Think about how they're related back in Calc AB, right? So remember that if I took the derivative of sine, I get cosine, right? And if I took the integral of cosine, I get sine again. So they're very related to the derivatives and antiderivatives here, right? So in Calc BC, you guys are learning these expansions. But that doesn't mean that everything else you guys learn drops, okay? So remember that sine x in this whole expansion are equal statements. They're just written very differently. It's kind of like fractions, right? 2 over 4 is the same thing as 1 over 2. So even though they're written very differently, they're equal. So in theory, if I take the derivative of sine, I should get cosine, right? So that means if I take the derivative of the expansion of sine, I should get cosine as well. So take a look. If I take the derivative of the expansion of sine, what is the derivative of x? It's 1. Okay, now this one, what's the derivative of negative x cubed over 3 factorial? I'll show you guys right here. Uh, that's, before I take the derivative, that's negative 1 over 3 factorial x cubed. So if I take the derivative, that's negative 1 over 3 factorial times 3x squared. One of those 3s can reduce out 
because that's negative 1 over 3 times 2 times 1 times 3x squared. 3s will reduce out, and I'm left with negative x squared over 2 times 1, or 2 factorial, which is exactly what I have here. I'm not going to prove all of them, but you'll notice that they're very closely related. And even the general term, x to the 2n plus 1, if I subtract that by 1, I should get 2n, okay? Now, the rest you could probably prove, but I'm not going to go over that, okay? So, um, the same thing, if I went backwards, if I took the integral of cosine, I should get sine. So, if I took the integral of the expansion of, sine, of cosine, I should get the expansion of sine. So, let's work backwards here. The integral of 1 is x. The integral of x squared is x cubed over 3 with that extra 2 factorial. But another way to write that is just x cubed over 3 factorial, which is what I have right up here. So they work both ways. So we're going to use that idea. That's a very big concept for you guys to understand, okay? Okay, so... Here I have the natural log of 1 plus x. Can the natural log of 1 plus x be built off of something that we already have? Pause and press play whenever you're ready, okay? Okay. I notice that when I integrate 1 over 1 plus x, I get the natural log of 1 plus x, okay? Make sure you guys understood what just happened there, okay? All right, so if I integrate uh, the expansion of 1 over 1 plus x, so pretty much all this here, I should get the natural logs expansion. All right, replay that a couple times. Okay, so here we go. I need to pretty much integrate every single term here. So let me write that out. The integral of 1 is x. Integral of x is x squared over 2. Integral of x squared is x cubed over 3. Now, negative 1 to the n is just a coefficient, so we're going to ignore it. And x to the n, if I integrate that, that's just going to be x to the n plus 1 over that same power. Plus dot, dot, dot. So that's how you get the expansion for the natural log of 1 plus x. You build off of what you know. Okay, so let's keep going. Here's the expansion, n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the n plus 1, all over n plus 1. Okay, if you guys take a look at that worksheet where it already has this filled out, this one is different. So make sure that you guys are checking this one right here, okay? I want you to use this one and not the one that's on your packet, okay? All right, so... This next part, again, you don't need to know why yet, but I will explain it. It's very similar, but it actually does hit one exactly, so I'm going to put a bracket right there, okay? Okay, and here's the last one, arc tan. It's kind of like the Lone Ranger here, um, but the easiest way that most people remember it is uh, that it's just odd, but not as exciting as this one. Okay, so hopefully you got what I'm saying here. If it's not as exciting, there are no factorials. So arctan is just like sine, but without the excitement. Okay, it does alternate sine. We have uh, 2n plus 1 because it's odd. But again, the denominator is just 2n plus 1 without the factorial. Okay. Cool. So we have our summation here. n equals 0, infinity, negative 1 to the n, x to the 2n plus 1, all over just 2n plus 1. Okay. This last part here, again, you don't have to know it, but this one is actually including both negative 1 and 1. I will prove that to you guys before the unit ends. Okay. Okay. So that's pretty much it. Think about how you're going to remember all of the expansions. Okay. We have to assume that the AP test is in person, 
So we're going to assume for now, uh, unless otherwise noted, uh, that we have to remember these, okay? If you remember it, it saves you an insane amount of time. So if you remember that last lesson, if you had to build stuff from scratch, it takes a long time. But if you build off of just a common Maclaurin series, it's a lot easier and faster, okay? Okay, so there's the backside for you guys to try. Let me know how it goes.